Hey guys, today I'll be talking a bit about flood fill nodes and how to use them to make your materials even better. So, uh, for starters, flood fill node is a very simple node. It just creates this weird sort of color pattern that you can see right here on the screen. And it doesn't do much firsthand, but what it actually does is it allows you to use flood fill nodes. So, what I mean by that is when you drag this out and type in flood fill, uh, you will see a lot and a lot of these nodes that now become available to you. So let's begin. Uh, what actually, um, what it actually is? So you basically just put in a grayscale uh, input into the flood fill, and it creates this um, input map. So uh, we can put in this simple edge detect I created here, and you can see how it creates this interesting-looking um, color pattern. And today we'll be covering only two nodes here, and I will show you the practical part of it, and this is the theoretical part of the flood fill node. So, uh, we have flood fill to gradient and flood fill to random grayscale. And flood fill to gradient is really useful, and I will show you the use later on in the video, but it gets you all these interesting gradients from each and every block of this uh, shape. So as you can see, this one has this kind of... Uh, uh, gradient this one has this kind of gradient and you can you can tweak this quite a bit using angle variation if you put it to zero it will be all the same um, angle you set in here but if you put angle variation you can even put some of the angle image multiplier if you want to use that slope input but I don't usually use it it's it's more than enough to have this kind of angle variation here and the other main use for it is flood fill to random grayscale and flood fill to random grayscale is exactly what it does. So it will take each of these, this one shape and it will give it a random grayscale value. And this will be used for coloring and albedo later on when I show you. Now there is another useful node that you might find yourself using and it's flood fill to position. But we will not be showing that one off today. So let's go on to the practical part. Okay, here is the practical part, and here I wanted to show you how I used flood fill in this uh, particular occasion for my stylized material here. And it's a flood fill node, where it's just simple flood fill from these kind of shapes, and it gets you this kind of flood fill node. Very simple. And I used flood fill to gradient here, with various, various different angle variations, as you can see. And this, this one doesn't actually have angle variations, which is actually fine as well. But see, you have a bunch of these angle variations. And what you can do with them is actually create uh, shapes and kind of sculpt the shapes into the, into the mask. As you can see, I just use Blend with Min Darken. And we blend these together to get these interesting sort of shapes with our rocks. And you can have... A lot of uh, fun with these because you can just put different uh, different angles, different angle variation values, and a bunch of things that make the make the make the make the noise and these kind of rock shapes even better. And let's get on to the other flood fill node. So the other flood fill node is actually used in the same material, and it's here uh, where we input. Uh, ambient occlusion mask into the flood fill to create the similar shapes we have here and then we use flood fill to random grayscale and what this allows us to do is this distance node is just for uh, just for a simple control controlling the actual uh, mask but it, you can just plug this in here so it doesn't really matter and what we did here is we did a random grayscale and with that random grayscale I went into the gradient map put it in and as you can see, we have now color variation in our material. So some of the some of the rocks are darker, some of our uh, uh, lighter, and we can also, if we want to, we can change the seed, and we can change it and create variations really, really quickly, as you can see. If you like this tutorial and would like to learn more about material creating in Substance Designer, consider checking out my Skillshare course down in the description. It is your go-to place to start learning more in-depth about creating materials inside Substance Designer and is also amazing for beginners that want to hop right into material creation. Also, if you use my link in the description, you get to watch the entire course entirely for free.